Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of your favorite Ravens YouTube channel and podcast. Talking Ravens all day, every day with your host, Justin P. And my MVP co-host, Ms. Shannon Fitz. Uh, this is episode 112, I believe. Yes, 112. And for the um, audio version of season 2, episode 18. All the links are right there in the description below. So no need to get into that. And I want to say like and share, subscribe. Ring the notification bell. You know, we're trying to get them subscribers up. Trying to be like engraved at them with like 60,000. <laughs> but uh, shout out to him. Shout out to uh, Coach Evans at Two Tallies. Uh, lunch break, hot take, uh, Hindi, Roll Paul, all them guys, man. Mike, OTR, Mike, you know, we'll go support those guys. Uh, you know, even some big things. So it's um, James Haskell and Glenn Martin over there at 410 Sports Talk. Um, Shannon got some good stuff for us today. It's you, you know, great topics. And I'll mock dress. I'm going to go ahead and let her take it away. All right. So before we get into this week's episode, I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw what happened today in Baltimore. So before we get started, we definitely want to give our thoughts and prayers to everybody who was impacted by um, the key bridge collapsing. Uh, when I woke up and started this morning, it was kind of like a movie. Like I, I, I couldn't believe what I was saying. I still can't believe that it happened. Um, from what I understand, they're still trying to rescue people. Um, they found more people today, but people were safe. No one's, as far as I know, they aren't deceased. Um, but I know people had to go to the hospital. So we definitely want to give everybody, um, let everybody know that in our thoughts and prayers and hope everybody can recover quickly from that because that was definitely a scary sight. For sure. All right. So let's get into it with the mock drafts. Justin, let me have your mock draft for this week. Okay. So for this week, all right. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll up a little bit. Give me one second because I got so many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, I'm going to do three of them. The okay. first one, um, and I think I had a trade. I did have a trade. But, um, yeah, so at 30, I took wide receiver uh, Troy Franklin, Oregon. Like I said, we need that outside guy, and he's the best player available. Um, at pick. So my phone had a lot. Give me one second. Mm-hmm. At pick 80, as I traded uh, from 62 to 80, and got another pick. Uh, took Mac, uh, Mac Gone, Gone, Gone Cows, I think that's how you said it, Tack out of Pittsburgh to show up the line. 93, uh, took DJ James, Corn out of Auburn. How about the secondary? Then 97, that's, what the, that's how I got the pick. I traded 62 and got 80 and 97. Uh, right. Brandon Dawless, uh, Edge Russia, Oregon. 113, took Makai Wingo, defensive tackle out uh, LSU to help, you know, in that area. Mm -hmm. And at 130, one receiver again, Malachi Corley, even though he probably won't be available around this time because he's just, his stock is risen. But, um, you know, another receiver, you know, because like I said, Bateman, fifth year option, probably don't get declined. Nelly only on a one year deal. So, yeah, you know, has some guys to say for the next couple of years. At 165, and one offensive line. Uh, Trevor Keegan, guard out of Michigan, know the hard ball ties. Uh, Geno Stone replacement right here, two to eighteen. Damani uh, right Richardson, safety out of Texas A M E, A and I don't know why I say A M E. Um, two twenty eight. Michael Barrett, linebacker, Michigan. You know he lost two linebackers, got to replace one. Mm -hmm. And two fifty. Uh, edge rusher Grayson Murphy out of UCLA. <clears throat> All right, here's the next one. Uh, Thirty. Jordan Morgan, offensive of tackle, Arizona. 62, Jalen Pope, uh, wide receiver out of Washington. 95, uh, DJ James, corner out of Auburn. 113, Dwayne Carter, not not Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive tackle out of Duke. 130, Muhammad Kamar, edge out of uh, Car Car Colorado State. We'll say Carolina State. 131, McKinley Jackson, defensive tackle, Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Uh, 165 Isaiah Adams, God out of Illinois, and 218 uh, JD Bertrand, linebacker Notre Dame, 228 Rasheen Ali, Ali, mm -hmm. running back Marshall, and 250 Dominic Hampton, safety Washington. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to my last one real fast. Give me one second. Uh, here we go. I uh, got Keon Coleman at 30. Uh, Kyron Amajaji, 
I'm a Gotti. I guess it's the, the tack what a Yale. Said his name best I could. Sorry if I messed it up. 93, DJ James, corner out of Auburn. That's why I, I picked him in a lot of mocks. Big corner. Mm-hmm. Christian, uh, Christian Mogani, uh, guard out of uh, Boston College, 130, Dwayne Carter, defensive tackle. Uh, 165, Javon Solomon, edge out of Troy. 218, Sam Hartman, quarterback, Notre Dame, a backup quarterback. You know you want Shannon. Mm-hmm. And 228. <laughs> Jawah Jordan, uh, Louisville running back, and 250, uh, Tyler Edwards, safety. All these got an A, A and A+. Plus. All right, so that's it for me. All right, so I actually have a lot of the same guys you have. I have, I have one mock draft this week, um, but I it's funny when you did your different mocks. I'm like, okay, I got him, I got him, I got him. So I like when we're on the same page with guys that we like. Um so this week I'm starting with 30, and I didn't do any trades with this mock draft. So at 30, I have Troy Franklin, wide receiver okay. from Oregon. Okay. At 62, I have DJ James, cornerback from Auburn. Okay. At 93, I have Joe Milton. We talked about need of a quarterback last week. At 113, I have Javon Solomon, Ash from Troy. At 130, I have Javon Foster, officer tackle from Missouri. Okay. At 165, I have Jalen is it Carlisle, a safety from Missouri. Okay. Um, at 218, I have an offensive guard from Tulane, Prince Pines. Okay. At 228, I have a safety from TCU, Mark Perry. So two safeties. Okay. And lastly, at 250, I have wide receiver from Oregon State, Anthony Gold. Yeah, he's going to be a sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, on to our new um, segment, which is a spotlight segment. And this week we're going to focus on Zach Orr, our new defensive coordinator. So, Justin, give me your expectations for Zach Orr and the 2024 season. Uh, I think the defense is going to pick up right where they left off. They were number one in so many categories. Led the league in sacks, led the league in takeaways, points allowed. Was like top top five against the run, even though that was you know some stuff that can get cleaned up. But I think the defense gonna pick up right where they left. Yes, we lost some a few pieces. Queen's gone, Gino's gone, Darby's gone. But like I said, the guys we have coming back, you know, gonna help out as well. Then you got Marcus Williams now fully healthy. He's you know gonna let the uh, uh, Peck Hill. Um, now Trenton Simpson gets in trenches to start. We saw what he did. He did week eighteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, Metabika, he's back. You know, uh, hopefully Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, uh, you know, Cal Hamilton, all pro. So it was like, you know, uh, Roger Washington, Michael Parrish, broke back Brent Urban. Uh, Ajabo, he's healthy. I think we can get a big year out of him. Uh, Adafi always turning the corner. Tavius Robinson got better. Hopefully Malik Hank can now show us something. And then if we can bring back Clowney and Van Noy, either one or even both. That's even better. But like I said, this defense definitely going to be a top five unit for sure. No no doubt about it. I like that. Um, For me, I expect Zach Orr to keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, when we talk about Baltimore and the identity that we have, we always start with the defense because that's what we're always known for. And by him being a former player and a, a coach before becoming a defensive coordinator, he knows what the standard is. So mm-hmm. I expect the, I expect the same I expect the same things we've had in the past. Um, having a lot of guys come back from last year is definitely going to be a plus. I'm definitely glad that the guys up front are all coming back. Um, all the guys you just named, hopefully we can get Javon, um, Clavey, um, Clowney back and Van Noy. Um, but if not, we do have some young guys there. We do have the draft, and we can see what happens there. But my biggest thing for Zach Orr is just knowing the standard. I feel like he's not going to come in and try to change up things too much from last year. I do expect us to be at least a top five defense again um, because that's that's the standard at this point. Um, I don't feel like our talent has dropped off so much that it's going to make a big difference. So the biggest thing for me with him this year is um, knowing knowing what's what, what's expected and letting the players know what's expected and holding them accountable to that. It's a little different when you're a player and then a position coach and then a coordinator. It's a different level of respect and a different level of accountability that got to be held. So I feel like um, Zach Orris, he's he, he's ready for it. You know, he's primed for it, and I'm, I'm expecting him to do great things in 2024. And he's young, energetic, and he was just in the uniform 
not too long ago. Long ago. So right. the players are going to respect him, and you know, because he can look at it from both angles—a player and a coach. And a coach, aspect. yeah. So yeah, I can't definitely I'm so. To him. All right. So our next topic: the Ravens signed some guys towards the end of last week, or maybe over the weekend. Um, we signed Kador Holman and Chris Board. What did you think about those two signings? Yep. I mean, Depp, and I, and I get it. I know every sign that's not going to be a name. Like, oh, whoa, make you jump off your seat. But mm-hmm. these are more so Depp guys. Like I said, Chris Boyd been here. He know the way. And when he got opportunity, he's played fairly decent. So that helps, mm-hmm. you know, especially with losing to Delshawn Phillips, one of the key special teamers. So mm-hmm. bring him back. Who knows the Raven way? He's familiar with that all. So that, that was good. Like a dog Harmon. Um, not a bad corner, but like I said, I thought we should have probably went with somebody else a little bit more spurs. But it's good depth. The special teams, like I said, we lost some guys in Dobby and a few other corners. Kevon Seymour, you know, who was playing special teams. So he's a big corner, six one. Like I said, if he ain't get called upon, I will hope he can hold his own. But I still think we're going to draft a corner and probably sign one of free agency. But, mm-hmm. you know, the two solid depth signers, that's really all I can say, honestly. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I wasn't really moved by it. Um, I looked at it more like um, it's a special teams move. Um, I know you probably saw the changes they made to special teams, and it's good to be able to bring somebody back that's been with the team, that knows the system, knows the culture, and things like that. But even like with Def, like you said, I mean, that that's probably the first thing, but they probably won't even – I mean, barring us having a year like we had last year where guys just kept getting hurt and you have to plug in guys mm-hmm. like that, I think we're going to um, see most of their uh, benefit being on special teams which is not a bad thing. That's a phase of football that we need. So, you know, we're building out the roster per se. That's how I felt. I just felt like, okay, special teams move. I agree. Yeah. So I don't know if you got a chance to see um, what Harbaugh said this past week. I think it was yesterday. Um, They're at the owners' meetings or the league's meetings, whatever they're doing down in Florida. Um, But he talked about Odell Beckham and why we couldn't bring him back. And he was saying that we're kind of like up against the cap. So with him saying that, it made me realize, like, the Ravens are going to do, they do their normal bargain shopping. And, 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 and in that sense, shall we as Ravens fans taper our expectations for free agent signings or big names that come in? What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We make one or two big signings a year. This one was Derrick Henry. So it's like, yeah, after that, it won't be another big name to add to Drew first. Like to like those that second, third wave guys get released when the rookies come in and they like, okay, we can go ahead and go with the rookie. He's showing us something, cut the veterans to save some money. That's right. that's how we got clowning you up and man knowing because that second that second and third wave of cuts. So yeah, right now you're not gonna see a lot of big names. You know, you won't see if you do see a sign, there'll be a guy that can that can that can come in and, and compete, but not like I said, like how Josh Jones is startup, not a big name, but can can come and compete, you're not gonna see I mean, but they have shocked us before. Like I said, he might say, you know what? Hey, let me go get uh, Marshawn Lattimore or Xavier Howard. Mm-hmm. The price is right. You never know. It all depends. But as of right now, I think, yeah, you should, we should definitely temper him out just a tad bit. Because like I said, unless we go get Mike Drew Thomas or something like that, even though a lot of people are not keen on it because his re- recent injuries. But he's mm-hmm. still, a, you know, hell of a player when he's, thing, yeah. when, when, he's, when he's fully healthy. So. You know, a receiver will probably be the next move. I can see, you know, then from there, they'll probably go off as a line, corn, and stuff like that. But, yeah, definitely tip them just a tad bit. I agree 100%. I mean, I, I we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, Like, when you got to make moves now for next year and the year after that, because there are going to be guys that got to be paid. When you hear John Harbaugh say we're up against the cap, that lets you know we don't have a whole lot of money to spend. So you have to be – um, strategic with the moves that you do make. So for that, we do have to take our expectations because outside of us giving up draft capital, which the Ravens probably really aren't interested in doing, you know, how else are we going to get somebody? And yeah. if we do get somebody, it needs to be somebody who probably already has a deal so that so they're not looking to us for a deal. But at the same time, if it's somebody who's in need of a deal, now you're putting yourself in a position where are you going to be able to pay um, Kyle, Linda Baum, you know, Zay when it's time, you know, guys like that. What are you going to do? What do you want to re-up with Mark Andrew? It's a lot that goes into um, creating and building a football team. And as fans, I don't think we really care that much about the cap because it's not something that we have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hear all these different things going on, how they can finagle things and pay a bonus here and do it this way so that it doesn't affect the cap. 
Yeah. But when I heard John Harbaugh say that um, yesterday, I was like, yeah, we probably shouldn't be looking toward looking for any like big name wide receiver or even a <laughs> cornerback, like you said, because we're up against the cat. So at this point, I think is we're going to go with what we got. We're going to go into the draft. And then, like you said, after June 1st and things like that, then they might start making moves. But between now and the draft, I don't really see anything big happen. It would have to be something crazy that, for me to be like, wow, like, I would be wild if something like that happens. Yeah, same here. Like I say, he he pulled the rappers out of the hat before. Like I said, yeah. if if he can get his Haven Howard or Marshawn Lattimore for the right price and sign like when him, we got get, Doom, like when we got Doomville that year. Yeah, you know, that was that was a shocker. That was an off an error on his assistant. Right, exactly. So, but like, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, you know, we, we, the EDC to pull rappers out of the hat before. So let's see. But like you said, as of right now, ninety percent, we're probably going to just wait to the draft and then we add to the draft. Hmm. All right, so our next topic. I know you probably saw this as well. It's been a lot going on, rule changes and things they're going to implement in 2024. So my question to you is this. Will the banning of the hip drop tackle impact the Ravens' defense negatively? Uh, I'm going to say no because, you know, we always teach fundamentals. But other things probably so because people got to understand. It's When you go going full speed – you're not going to always make a perfect textbook tackle. It's just impossible. I played football all my life. It's impossible. You know, it's ways you can take somebody down without doing all the extra stuff. But, you know, it, it's just, like I said, it's just no way you can make a filing game completely safe. It's just, it's just. Is you can. That's like, that's like in boxing. Oh, that's like telling me the boxers, oh, y'all only can throw punches to the chest. No Bible watch. Right. No people watch. It's the same thing with this. I get it. Like, you know, it's just, I get it, play a safety, but this move's too much. Like I said, because what if a person get hurt on a regular textbook tag? What you going to say then? Like, it happens. Like, it's a physical game. Like, when mm-hmm. Mika Fitzpatrick came out and tackled with Chubb, he just tried to make a tackle. He, he got hurt. It happens. Mm-hmm. It happens. Like, it's a physical game. So it's like, I get it, but it's like, I was like, which I want to see, 75, 73, like a rain of football. Like, it's like, come on now. They need some flags out there. Yeah, like, come <laughs> on. Uh, so, for me, I, I had, like, a couple of I – had, I had different thoughts when I first saw this happening. Um, my initial thought was good. And the reason why I said good was because we saw, we saw this tackle a lot happen last season, and it seemed to get a lot of guys hurt. Even when you think back to that Bengals game, I mean, shoot, we almost had out, outside of Mark Andrews getting hurt. Lamar could have gotten hurt in that situation. I forgot who else almost got tackled or did get tackled like that, and it could have been a situation. Um, but it's like you said, they can get hurt in any situation. Like any tackle that you do, it could be an issue. Um, but this is what, what gave me cause to pause. I was watching, I, I saw a little bit of um, Pac McPhee, um show was on ESPN um, yesterday, yeah. Yeah. and they were talking about it's coaches in the NFL that are that are teaching guys to tackle like that, like encouraging them to do that. Now that I got a problem with. Yeah, you shouldn't because be doing it, that. Because there's one thing if you say, like you said, I can't control how fast I'm going. We in we 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 in the middle of the game. I'm not trying to hurt you, but I might do something and you might get hurt, and that's different. But if you're actually coaching them up to me, that's almost like talking about like Saints and the bounty stuff that you know yeah. back in 09. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can't you can't do that. So my thing is. Let's get back to the fundamentals of football in general. And like you said, it's already a violent sport. So we don't need to do all the extras and some of the things we've seen. And I've talked to some guys that have played football too, and they're like 50-50 on it. Like like some of the things that you just said, I've had guys say that to me. But I've also had guys say, good, like they need to take it out because you don't, you're not supposed to tackle like that. No, you're not. So, you're not. so I think that if they get back to the basics, Teaching how to tech when it's it's unfortunate because they're in a the pros. You like y'all don't know how to do it, but get back to that, and I think they'll be okay. When it comes to the Ravens, I don't know how I feel about it because for one, I can't. I'm, I'm not saying we didn't do it because I'm sure we're, we're through 17 games, you may have done it at some point, and it's uh, intentionally or not. But when I saw Marlon Humphrey um, saying like, you know, what are we supposed to do or how are we supposed to tackle, that gave me a little bit of pause for concern at that point because I'm just like. I mean, wrap up. You know, we talk about it all the time. Like, wrap somebody up. Actually, like, you know, get do do what you're taught. And as a child, through high school, through co- like, don't get into now. You guys are making money, and it's like, 
I don't know. Sometimes I think money can just make things different. No, just half, get of, back, half just, of them don't want to tackle anyway because they feel like they're yeah, making 15, 20 million. So they ain't trying to, they're making just, business decisions. Like, I'm just, yeah. just being honest. So it's unfortunate. And then y'all, y'all make business decisions and sometimes somebody else gets hurt. But then I also think a lot of this goes back into the rule changes with hitting them in the head. Because since they know they're going to get penalized of hitting guys with their helmets or hitting them above all of those different things and the rules they've changed then, it was about the legs at first. Guys are going for legs and taking knees out. Now it's the, the drop hit. It's too much. So just get back to the basics, and I think everybody could be fine. Yeah, see, how the hell is going to happen? It's, that's, why yeah. it's on, that's why it's on your head. That's why it's on your head, because there's no way in the world you're going to have time in a real-life game to stop and place your head to the side every single no. time. It's not going to happen. That's mm-hmm. why – So I've, and I've talked to a lot of offensive guys, me, myself, as an offensive guy. I don't ever get a hit because I concussion. I'm only up for six they days. Because yep. if you could blow it. up my ACL, I'm done for two years probably. Did so, you hear what um? Did you hear what RG three said about him not having any feeling in his knee? Yeah, if, like because of his because injuries. of his injury from what? What was when he got injured in 2012? Yeah, t- 12 years ago. <laughs> and he and he said he said he still does not have feeling on his. He must well knee. rather not to have bust him in his head. He get a little headache. All right, next week I'm good. Where's all that? You know, it's just like I said, man. It's, I get so let's, just, let's just hope they get. Let's just hope they get back to the basics. Like I said, the Ravens are pretty much. I, I'm not saying we don't, you know, do the things that we aren't supposed to do, but for the most part, we we try to play football the right way. It, I just feel like in this this training camp, they're gonna have to get back to the basics. You know what? It'll settle all this, shit, and then we can move on. Bring mm-hmm. back padded practices because you cannot go all week long. Walking through things, then on Sunday, just think you just supposed to come out there and knock somebody's head off. It doesn't work like that. It and, and doesn't that, work like and, that. And that's the players' fault because they were the ones that they wanted to practice. They bitch they can play. I'm all sore. I don't understand it's it. The I don't fuck understand you it. supposed to be, bro. But then they mad when the rules get changed. It's like, what y'all want? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, you're right. They was crying about it. Uh, yeah. Bring back padded practices and, every, and everything. And everything. Like I said, you had less injuries in the, when the game was way more physical because they their right. bodies was used to it. They got beat up during the week, so on Sunday it's like, all right, now, mm-hmm. now you ain't tackling them by a week. Now you got to get up there tackle a two hundred sixty pound running back or get and off a three people, or get off a three hundred pound block. And also, people were saying too, like, what are they supposed to do? The guys are bigger than them. Figure it out. Like, guys been bigger than guys all all this time that the NFL been around. Like, you don't have to do it like that. You know what I mean? Like. Just bring and it's back. unfortunate because you see guys getting hurt, and it's like we know y'all not trying to hurt them, but they said it's been a it's been one of those tackles in every game last year, mm-hmm. every game last season. You can't do. I don't know. Figure it out. Figure it out. I, I don't. I don't feel like that's a big deal. Like I seen a lot nah, of people crying. Like, what are we? What are we gonna do? Figure it out. Learn how to tackle. In my opinion, like whatever. Just go for the hips and and, and the legs, and you can't go wrong. But they need to bring that pad of practices, like I said, and then everything will take care of itself. Yeah. All right. So our last topic for today, um, I don't know if you also saw this or heard this yesterday out of the um the owners meeting. You know, I miss a lot of stuff now that I work more on this. I'll be missing a lot of stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> so um Sashi Brown talked about the potential of Baltimore hosting an NFL draft at some point. What do you think about that? Would you like that? That'll be dope. That'll be dope. Um, I mean, if we can play football games there, why we can't host stuff like that? Mm-hmm. I just don't understand. I get it. We don't have the strip or we don't have the festivities like everybody else. But, you know, it, same way two people find stuff to do when they come here when they team play the Ravens. They can do the same thing when it's the draft for the Super Bowl. Like, it's the same thing. Like, you know, draft is three hours something long. It's the same thing as a football game. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I don't see why not. Like, we have, we have the stadium here for a reason. We hold everything else here, concerts and all that. Why I can't hold the draft? I agree. When I heard him say that, I was like, yes. Number one, I'm actually surprised at the amount of people who were like, why? Like, I'm talking about Baltimoreans. Like, why would they want to do that? What are they going to come here? What are they going to do? We need to stop acting it's like It's the same like thing. That's when people my come watch beat Nicki Minaj at the CFG. Anything. Wait, what the fuck are y'all saying? Excuse my language. Any, any, anything, right? So, like I said, number one is going to bring money to the city. So, why would you be against that? We host, we host now we're hosting a CIAA. That seems to be a big deal every year. It's been here for, what, two to three years now? Big deal. Every weekend. That, those weekends are great. We have Freakness, 
That was, you took the word that, right out of my mouth. Right. And a couple of years ago, we had Grand Prix. Right. So let's not act like we haven't hosted events before that are outside of the Oreos or the Ravens. And there are things to do in Baltimore. People will find things to do. People will host events. There will be things to do. People will if be they party decide and that, the parties are you know more to mean? clean up their whole stuff. It's, 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 you know. So for me, I would love it. I would absolutely love it. I think that would be something great to experience. I absolutely. think that would be great for everybody to be able to experience that. Um, and it, like I said, it would be beneficial to the city. So I hope that it happens. I don't care when it happens because as long as I'm here, God willing, I'm going to go to the NFL draft if it's in Baltimore. You'll be like, here, let's Shane. Go for You'll it. be here. Yeah, you'll be here. Yeah. Trust me. Let's go. Same here. Yeah. I'm definitely going to go. Like, that's a good experience. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like I said, people will find, there's a, find stuff to do. Definitely. Our city not that dead. Like, I don't know. No, nah, like, no. Nah, it's, it's, it's just the fact <laughs> that we out in this crime everywhere. Detroit got probably more murders than us. And people still find stuff to do uh, there. But that's what I so. tell people too. Like, <laughs> Baltimore is no different than any other urban city. Like, stop trying to make it seem like we just so far worse than everybody else. That's because like, the wire. Uh, even though it's a good it's, reputation, but it also haunts us at the same time when it comes to certain and stuff. I, and I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But um, great shows, you know. You know, it's always fun doing this. You know, uh, we'll be here Thursday. Dave we'll has some good stuff going on. I think he got a new segment. So, like I said, off season mm-hmm. is that. I let the I let them shine. I just sit back and just be the be mm-hmm. be the point guard, and just facilitate this. You know, they come up with some great topics. So yeah, anything you want to say, Shannon? Before we wrap it up. I do. I don't know if you guys watch um, Marlon Humphrey's podcast, but I just want to say you should check out the episode he did with RG3. It was a lot of great gems there. If you are a John Harbaugh fan or not a John Harbaugh fan, I think that you can listen to that and get some gems about him and have a better understanding of how he is as a coach and how the players feel about him. And it was actually, it was for me as somebody who defends him, I was happy to hear what I heard. So I would definitely say check out Marlon Humphrey's uh, podcast. Yeah, I, I saw a snippet of it. I'm definitely going to watch that before the week is out. He always has some good stuff on there. Uh, all I want to say is, to piggyback on Shannon, say definitely prayers for everybody that has been involved in that, um, you know, that terrible accident on the, on the bridge. Uh, you know, definitely keeping the, you know, you know, families and friends of those people and our prayers, hopefully more people, you know, and find more survivors. Yeah, but definitely, like I tell everybody, man, you know, that's why... I, no, you never know when it's out of time. You know, never know what things going to happen. That's why I put all the petty beasts aside and level on each other, man. Because like I said, you here today, we gone the ball. Yeah. Um, like I said, everyone have an amazing Tuesday. Enjoy March Madness. NBA games. Orioles, you know, start Thursday. So I got the hoodie on. I'll be there Saturday. So, you know, we'll be back Thursday, you know, with another great show. And I know what I'm about to say. Make sure y'all trade. You know what trade means? Talking Ravens all day, every day. Uh, with my MVP co-host, Ms. Shannon, and myself, Justin P. We'll see y'all Thursday, same bad time, same bad channel, and we are out. Good night, Justin. Good night, Shannon.